How's it going, Chargers fans? Welcome into the Guilty as Charged podcast. And the Chargers, in a surprise move, have fired special teams coordinator Darius Swinton after just one year with the team. I certainly did not expect this. I reached out to a player, and he said he did not expect this. So what happened? What are we doing? What does it mean for the team? And is there another option available out there that Staley may be interested in? So let's get into that here. A little bit of stats first, then a little bit of speculation. So first and foremost, what does the special teams unit look like overall? Not great. They were 32nd last year. They finished 28th this year in special teams DVOA. I believe before the Raiders game that they were 23rd. So things were looking good. And then Hopkins misses a field goal. Roberts fumbles the ball. And now they're at 28th, which is improvement, but it's still 28th. They were 29th in hidden points. They were 30th in punt return average. 7th in kick return average, thanks to that Andre Roberts guy who just got named second team all pro. Uh, 27th in opposing punt return average, which has always been their Achilles heel, even with the Lynn era. And then opposing kick return average, 18th. The kickoff kickoff return groups did do better, right? I think that you could tell that, yes, Roberts and Hopkins did make things better, but you could tell that some of the players either covering those kicks or blocking for those kicks did improve. But overall, you know, not the best numbers, certainly not what you want to see after the special teams unit being so bad for so long, they're just slightly less bad at the end of the year. But I don't think it was really the best hand for Swinton to be dealt. I mean, a lot of the guys, if you look at the number of players that are rookies who played a ton of special teams, Nick Neiman, Chris Rumpf, Eamon Ogbong Bamiga, a lot of guys that are just joining the league who are going to be your core special teams guys for a while, but they just got here and they're trying to learn. And in particular, Chris Rumpf, you know, if you'd followed me on Twitter, you'd see that I was not a big fan of Chris Rump on kickoff return to start the year. I think the first eight or nine weeks or so on kickoff return blocking, he was letting guys bulldoze him over. He just didn't look comfortable. He looked like an edge rusher trying to block as an offensive lineman, basically. And it just looked uncomfortable. But towards the end of the year, you see Chris Rump and Jalen Guyton lead blocking for Andre Roberts on that great kickoff return against the Broncos. And of course, the kickoff return against the Chiefs. So those guys improved, in particular, Chris Rumpf. And I think with the, this unit, in particular, that kickoff return unit, kickoff coverage unit, you could see that Darius Swinton did have a role in helping those guys improve. They got better. Yes, you know, Hopkins and Roberts are kind of plug and play. And I don't know how much credit he could really get for those two guys because they basically just walked in and were good for the team. But you could tell that there was improvement. So why let him go? I know he was not dealt the best hand. This is not the most talented group. You know, especially to begin the year, they had no talent. So why let him go? So we're going to start a little bit more broad and then work our way more narrow here. I didn't feel like doing anything fancy. So I'm just going to delete the big boxes as they go. So the more broad stuff, right? Overall, the special teams was not good. If you look at their improvement, you can tell there's plenty of improvement, especially on kickoff, kickoff return, bringing in Roberts, bringing in Hopkins. Look, you bring in talented players, or at least you know, we assume that they were talented and good things happen, especially with the Roberts kickoff return situation. Um, but the other one, I think it's just, I put wasting practice here. Not necessarily that he wasted the practice because they weren't doing anything productive. It's just that Brandon Staley gave Darius Swinton like 65% of the, of the time during each practice, at least when we were there. If you want, look at any of the beat reporters reports, special teams was a huge priority in a way that we had never even seen, not even close. They, it was just like, Herbert would go for five plays and the second team would go for five plays. And then special teams would be out there for, for 20 minutes or something. I had not seen that before. And, you know, it's part of the reason that maybe the defense didn't perform as well this year, that the offense just wasn't, you know, super jelly, you know, early on or through the whole years, because so much time was spent on special teams and the special teams turned out to be bad. So unfortunately, you know, I think when you're overall, your special teams don't look that good, even with, even with, the additions of Roberts and Hopkins, and you basically had all that time in practice to make it better, and you ended up 28th in DVOA, not great. Another one, a little sort of in the middle here, a biggish point, but not, not like a small point. I think it's personnel decisions. Now, this is kind of speculation, but, you know, KJ Hill and Austin Prohl were the guys who had the shot at pun return, kickoff return. But by, I think, the second preseason game, it was the KJ Hill show. It was just, it was pretty darn obvious that KJ Hill had this job all the way through. And a lot of people thought, okay, you know, it's a Tom Telesco thing. Got to make my guy work. Got to make my draft pick work, which I hate that whole discussion, but whatever people jump on that. 
And what did KJ Hill do? Kind of nothing, right? He wasn't very good on kickoff return, wasn't good on punt return. They tried going with Roundtree next, and that wasn't really all that great. And, you know, I, I think the idea that Hill had the job because he could contribute on special teams, and that's kind of it, is sort of concerning. Because at least if Roberts has the job, and he could only contribute on special teams, well, at least he was good at it. KJ Hill couldn't really contribute on offense, and also he was bad at special teams. And so just giving him the job outright and then watching that completely fail is not good. Now, is that all Darius Winton's fault or is it the job of the general manager to provide you something better than KJ Hill? It's, it's also part of the general manager's fault, right? But they're not firing the general manager. So Swinton has to go. A big one of speculation, though, is Tyron Johnson and how much of his inability to play special teams played a role in him not getting, you know, sticking on the roster. And though I'm going with, you know, six wide receivers or hell, even having him there over KJ Hill or Jalen Guyton. Because... Well, first off, I don't know if you saw this, but the guy who punched out the ball of Andre Roberts against the Raiders was Tyron Johnson. So uh, he found his way to special teams value and it bit the Chargers in the ass. So that's great. But you know, if you look down the list of you know who would have let Tyron Johnson go, it's almost impossible to think of one good reason or one person who could have let him go unless the special teams coordinator was saying, look, this guy has no value on special teams. And if you want you know someone who has special teams value, like Guyton, who did block well on special teams, or Hill, who was a punt returner, kickoff returner, then there's no room for Tyron Johnson. I can't find a job for him. You know, because if you go down the list, did Joe Lombardi want him to let him go? No. Joe Lombardi was dialing up deep shots to Tyron Johnson one time per day at camp. I mean, Justin Herbert could not stop throwing bombs to Tyron Johnson in camp. Wasn't him. I doubt it's Tom Telesco, and I doubt it was a character issue for Tyron Johnson. Everyone's like, oh, it's a character issue. But to me, you know, they signed him in 2019. Then they gave him reserve, con- you know, futures contract for 2020. Then he was activated from the practice squad or elevated from the practice squad. And then he got a two-year deal with the team. So, you know, and then Austin, he has character issues. I mean, maybe, but the idea that he was, you know, squeaky clean in the Lynn era, and suddenly we get to the Staley era and it's like, oh, he's a character guy now after two years, two and a half years with the team. I don't really buy that. So I don't, I don't see why Telesco would let that guy go. Why would you let production go for cheap? Like Tyron Johnson is cheap production if anything you know you get this pretty solid receiver who has a great rapport with herbert for cheap and then so why would brandon staley let him go i I think to me it comes down to staley basically trusting or putting too much trust in swinton going hey you're my special teams guy right i'm the defensive coordinator i'm the head coach i do have a role in saying special teams but it's really you're my special teams coordinator you're the veteran i trust you you know can we afford to let tyron johnson go and i think swinton might have said yes i think that might have contributed because I mean, listen, I'm, just, I'm trying to find reasons here. And the whole time on Johnson, no special teams value thing was really weird. And so I think at some point, Swinton did have some input. And that input, you know, I think kind of cost Johnson his job. And so it just didn't work out. Another one that's not really his fault, Tristan Vizcaino, you know, you want the guy to develop, but he never really did. And it got worse during the season than it was in the preseason. I don't fault him for picking Vizcaino. You know, I think of the three guys they had especially if you know that Staley is going to be more aggressive on fourth down. Like we obviously by now we know that, you know, I, I think them going with this guy, you know, who's the only guy of those three that supposedly could hit those you know 60 plus bomb shots. I don't mind that, but he picked him. It didn't work. He didn't develop. Now he's off the roster too. So I think that's part of the reason. And then finally RB four, whether that be contributing or even really RB three contributing on special teams as a returner, as a gunner, whatever, they never really found a way to get Kelly or Roundtree involved. You know, it's like, okay, you, you keep those guys on the roster. I hated keeping four running backs on the roster, but you at least keep the fourth one so you can get some sort of special teams value out of him, right? Be a gunner, right? Go get someone on kickoff return. Go block on, you know, on pump block or whatever. And they really just never got Kelly or Roundtree involved in that area. And so they kind of just burned a hole in the roster. So, you know, between the, the decisions to keep a guy, cut a guy, whatever, I think Swinton was involved in that. But one last reason you fire Swinton, I think it's a small reason that's more speculation than anything, or it could be a big reason we're about to find out, is that somebody better is available. So who would that be? Let's talk about it. Don't fire me for saying this. Joe Judge is one of them. Joe Judge was just let go. Obviously, he's the head coach of the Giants. As we always say, some guys are not meant to be head coaches. They're just good coordinators. And Joe Judge, whether you want to believe it was him, or just the fact that the Patriots always have good special teams. Joe Judge did lead, what says here from the CBS article, a strong special teams unit. 
They were number one in average starting field position, number one in opponent starting field position. They blocked two punts for touchdowns, which is a league high that year. And they never allowed a punt to be returned for 20 yards or more under judge. I don't know if that's, I mean, that's good. I don't know if that's league average or what, uh, but not bad. So, you know, Joe judge is an option there. I think if you look at another one, that's a little bit more concerning. And I, if they, okay. So Tom McMahon is a special teams coordinator or was the special teams coordinator for the Broncos. And he was obviously just let go. Eh. If they go with Tom McMahon over Darius Swinton, I will riot on this coaching staff because now this feels like almost worse than the Lynn era where it's not just, you know, I have my guys and I stick with them, but I'm like, I'm just going to fire anyone to bring all my guys in. And we've sort of seen that with their player decisions, right? Whether it be um, Aaron Banks, or Eric Banks, right? From the uh, Rams or Trey Marshall, or I forget his first name, Harris from the Broncos, right? Bringing these guys in that, you know, from the Broncos or the Rams, if Staley does this and they bring in a guy who's uh, whose special teams this year was worse than the chargers, I'm not going to be super happy with that one because that means that we're just kind of just hiring all of our friends and I'm not really down for people to just hire all of their friends. So, you know, we'll see how that goes. I, the, the Broncos are the ones who let Andre Roberts score that touchdown and the Broncos are the ones who muffed that punt. That's the Broncos special teams. So if they hire him and he is available, I'm not going to be super pleased. So the last one is, let me get his first name. I forget. It is Chris Tabor from the Chicago Bears. He was a Chicago Bears special teams coordinator. And uh, Staley would know him from 2018, where he was special teams coordinator. And Staley was the outside linebackers or Ed Richards coach or whatever it was. This is a good hire. Chris Tabor has been interviewed by the Carolina Panthers, by the way. So he's out there getting interviews. So it's possible. Their special teams was seventh in special teams DVOA. So again, Chicago seventh, Chargers 28th, and the Broncos 30th. So if that's where the route he wants to go, where it's a connection to someone who's good or whose special teams were at least good, then hey, you know, I, I'm kind of okay with that. So of the three options, I'm really out on McMahon. I really hope that's not the case, but I wouldn't be surprised because Staley seems to go with guys that he knows from Denver and the Rams. Uh, Joe Judge, I think a lot of us were wondering if the Chargers would bring on a veteran coach to this coaching staff, right? Swinton is kind of the veteran coach of the staff. Lombardi has been a coach for a while, but it's mostly quarterbacks coach and a year of offensive coordinator. And then, you know, Brandon Staley, only one year as a defensive coordinator with the Rams, one year with the Chargers now. So they want to bring in someone with a little bit more veteran experience. And I think Joe Judge, who has had a good special teams background with the Patriots, and obviously, if you, hey, if you do, if you do special teams like the Patriots, that, that's cool with me, right? That's a really good set of, of players there and a, a really good unit. So you, know, you get that, you get some experience. That makes sense to me. I'm Adam McMahon and Tabor is an interesting one. I don't know much about him, but the fact that his special teams was seventh in D special teams DVOA sounds good to me, right? Anybody else want a, a top 10 special teams? That sounds good to me. Why, who, how? I don't know, uh, but that'd be an interesting one for the Chargers uh, to work with there. And also, I guess if we're kind of projecting here, so if he was a special teams coordinator from 2018 to 2021, and also he was there while Staley was there, I believe then that means he was also there while free agent Cordero Patterson was there. So I think that could be an interesting connection there. Kind of exciting. I don't know. We'll see. So those are the three guys that they could potentially go with. The only one I'm, I'm, I'm curious what they do with is Ty Long. I think Andre Roberts returns and should return. I think Dustin Hopkins returns and should return. Ty Long is a restricted free agent, so I could see them bringing him back um, because they don't really have anything else right now. But I do think that you could see a world where, um, you know, they bring Ty Long back and then find some other way to move on from him. They just have him as kind of like, a, like, like Michael Badgley, basically, right? You have Badgley, you bring him back, you have him, but you find someone else you think you can replace him. Hopefully they do a better job of replacing Long than they did with Badgley when they went with this guy, you know. You know, but Thailand could be replaced by like a Matt Ariza, Ariza, however you say his last name, the punter from San Diego State, who, you know, I reached out to someone who knows him and he says he's a great kid, hard worker, you know, all, all the usual stuff. Um, but it, it sounds like, you know, he, he's a guy that's right up their alley. And I think knowing who I reached out to, there are some connections there that I could make um, because I think it could work. Yeah, I, I think that's a person that they could target in the draft with all the picks that they have. So, you know, we could see some special teams turnover. We could see some, who knows? I didn't, expect, I didn't expect to be talking about special teams today. 
can't say it's my forte or that I've been closely following the special teams, but it's certainly a surprise. I did not expect them to fire Darius Swinton, but here we are. They fired Darius Swinton. So what do you think? Was this a surprise to you? And if it was a surprise, um, do you agree with it? Do you disagree with it? Let me know what you guys think. And if there's someone you have an eye on to replace Darius Swinton, let me know. I went with Tabor, McMahon, and Joe Judge. If you think of somebody else, let me know. I don't know who else is out there. And that's probably all the energy I'll put into this video uh, or into this topic. But I can't wait to talk about it with my guys. Thank you guys for listening and following along. Uh, leave a comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And as always, bolt up.